Hi everyone, with this video, I am starting a new masterclass series on different important concepts, techniques and best practices around using and implementing AI for your business or for your day-to-day -day work. In this video, I am going to take you through the important concepts of prompt engineering, RAG or retrieval augmented generation and fine-tuning LLM and also discuss the benefits and proper use case of each of these techniques to help you choose the right solution for your next world-changing idea. If that's what interests you, let's get started. Welcome back. In this masterclass series, we are going to discuss a lot of the fundamental concepts in the world of AI from a very beginner level to a much more advanced levels. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribe to the channel to get update on any of the new video release. This being the first video in this masterclass series, we are going to discuss in details the fundamental concepts of different AI techniques that's been used by many AI applications out there in the internet. In this masterclass, we are going to focus on these following topics. At first, we are going to take a look what is the best prompt engineering practices are with a detailed example. And then we are going to discuss what are the potential use cases where prompt engineering alone can be sufficient to power up an AI application. Next, we are going to discuss about RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation in its basic form, how it is implemented. And then we are going to take a look how we can use both prompt engineering and basic RAG setup effectively in different use cases. After that, we are going to explore a potential shortcomings of a basic RAG pipeline and how you can improve a basic RAG pipeline using some advanced techniques. And then finally, we are going to touch the important topics of fine tuning and LLM. We are going to discuss the benefits of fine tuning and LLM. And in the final section, we will explore how we can use all these three techniques, which is fine tuning LLM and then RAG and the prompt engineering to create a powerful AI applications for day to day use. So all of these topics will be outlined with a timeline in the video. So if you are interested in one section rather than the other, you can go straight to that section and watch that part. If you are ready, let's get started. With the increased use of ChatGPT or similar AI tools, I don't think I would have to explain you what prompt engineering is and what are the different prompt engineering flavors out there. And also there are billions of YouTube videos out there on how to craft an effective prompt. However, when it comes to creating AI application, there are a set of standards that's been used in crafting the prompt and which is what we are going to take a look at it here. So when you're creating an AI application, your prompt would be looking like this. So basically your prompt will have a priming section where you will basically give some instructions to your LLM about what this prompt about. Then you should set some tone and style settings. For example, here I have said that this AI assistant should generate response on a 10th grade reading level and also maintain an educational friendly tone. Next, you should also have some kind of error handling because when you're creating an AI application, you're not really in the control of the user input. So you should have some kind of error handling and also handle some edge case scenario. So that's where I said, okay, if the questions is not relevant to the renewable energy, kindly decline the answer and state that the query is outside of the expertise of the service. And then one of the most important section in your prompt should be the response formatting. For example, if you're creating an application that will be read by another application, you would probably want the response to be in a JSON structure. So you can specify the JSON structure formatting in your prompt, obviously, right? And then you can add an example, which is we, which we also call as one shot programming or few shot programming if you want to add more examples here so that your LLM knows how to respond by looking at these examples. And this will become your system prompt. And then the dynamic content where user will actually ask the question that becomes your user prompt. And this is more sort of a generic effective prompt engineering technique used by many, many applications out there. Now, one of the things that you must understand that when you are interacting with LLM, you are interacting with a large language model. That means you are interacting with a model who understand the language properly. It doesn't mean that the information produced by the LLM is going to be appropriate. So that is why if you are going to build an AI application solely depend on prompt engineering technique, those application or use case should be related to the language specifically. That is why it is recommended to use prompt engineering alone in this kind of use cases where you want to do a language translation or localization, you want to do email and communication drafting, maybe you want to brainstorm an idea in your AI application, or maybe you'd want to do some copywriting in a specific style. Because here you are basically using the language skill 
more than the informational skill, right? However, we must remember that LLM are not a trusted source of information. Yes, when you're using ChatGPT or similar AI tools that generally produces response with information that seems to be true, but LLMs are just a prediction machine, right? That means it might sometime produce information that will seem to be correct, but it may not be correct. And that is where even when ChatGPT produces an answer, it writes in the below section that you should always verify the information. What LLM is doing or ChatGPT is doing, it's taking your user interaction question and it's trying to predict the next token or the words and then it's creating the response. So please remember that LLM are not trusted source of information. That is where if you want to build a system where you have a lot of information to be processed by AI, you should provide those information into the context of the LLM. And that is where a concept of RAP or retrieval augmented generation comes into picture. Now, one of the most important component of a RAG system is a vector database. Now, what happens around vector database is let's say you have a lot of information in the form of PDF, documents, web pages that you want to feed into the vector database as your knowledge store. How you do that? That you want to split the documents into a tokens that is supported by your large language model context window. You can do different chunking strategy and everything. And then you are going to create an embedding for that chunk embeddings are nothing but a numerical representation of the data so that it could be stored in the vector database in a more numeric and compressed representation so later on in the ai application that you are building when user input a query then that query will be also embedded and then using the embedding version or the numerical representation of the query it will search the nearest vector or from the vector database and then it will it will send that information from the vector database based on the top k or the number of results that you are fetching from the database it will send it to the llm as a contextual prompt and then your llm will finally create the response using the searched information from your vector database i hope this makes sense to you so now if you look at the prompt engineering with the rag approach you will see that we have kept the system prompt as it is and then we are also kept the user prompt as dynamic as the user would put query but then we are also adding some kind of contextual prompt or some kind of context where we are fetching the information from the vector database and it we are adding that information with the user prompt so when llm will generate its response it will use this contextual information as it has retrieved from the vector database now there are several use cases where you can use proper and effective prompt engineering with a rag approach like you can create a customer support automation or customer support chatbot you can create different healthcare applications with different medical data or maybe patients medical record you can create different educational applications different legal and regulatory applications using you know legal documents or regulatory compliance documents so yeah, there are, there are lots and lots of use cases that you can build using prompt engineering and RAG together. Now, one of the problems that you might face when creating such application is if your knowledge base is huge and you are creating millions of millions of vectors, then a generic query from users or a more complex query from user can make the vector search more complex and it probably may fetch out wrong information from the vector database. If you have a large set of documents which are based on similar set of sentences or word formations or maybe similar semantic meanings, then there will be issues in fetching the records from the vector database which could be sometimes not appropriate to the user query. And this is where we need to improve our RAG system with different RAG improvement techniques. We can categorize this type of technique as advanced RAG techniques. Now, there are lots and lots of such techniques available. Most of the popular ones are RAG re-ranking, uh, multi-step RAG implementation, knowledge graph, enhanced RAG, and hybrid retrieval. Now, discussing all of these advanced RAG techniques will take significant amount of time. So as part of this video, I'm going to discuss about RAG re-ranking and multi-step RAG implementation. In the future master classes, we are going to bring more in-depth review of all these four systems and even do some more implementations. Now, let's take a look at what is happening really when we are using RAG re-ranking. So basically, you have your set of documents and now this set of documents you have already vectorized into the vector database. Now, when user have made a query, let's say in your AI application, you have selected top KS10. So that means what you're essentially saying is that when your RAG pipeline will query the vector database, it will fetch the top 10 output or top 10 similarity search output from the vector database. Now, it may so happen if you have a large chunk of vector embeddings is that out of this 10 output, maybe only four outputs are actually relevant to the user query and rest of the outputs are not actually relevant as such. 
Now, what you can do is you can send all the 10 search output from your Victor database to your LLM to generate the output, but that may not be effective and in both in terms of LLM context window as well as cost, because this might probably will consume a lot of token and in turn will cost you more and it will also slow down your application performance. So what you can do as using in a re-ranking approach is you can implement a re-ranking technique and that re-ranker will take the searched output, the all the 10 output, and then if you select top n equal to four or three based on the re-ranker configuration, this will help you rank the documents. This will fetch the relevant information from the search result and, and keep it on the top. And then you use this top four search result, pass it to LLM, which will create the better response specific to the user query. Now let's take a look at another technique, which is multi-step rag setup. This is more similar to the basic rag setup, but we are going to introduce two more steps additionally into the basic rag setup. So what we are doing here is we are taking the user query and then we are going to do some optimization of the user query or pre-process. For example, we can do summarization of the user query using LLM. We can ask to fetch the actual question from the user query that we can search to the vector database. Then we can embed that optimized output and, and use that optimized output to search the vector database. And then we, when you get the result, let's say you have set top equal to 10. So you have got like 10 result and then you use another LLM to filter out the most appropriate result. And then we pass in the most appropriate result into the contextual prompt and, and then use our LLM to generate the final response. So this is a multi-step rag pipeline setup that you can use for your application. Um, and that will definitely help you generate better output but it might become a bit slow because there are several steps of filtering happening using LLM in this pipeline. Now fine-tuning and LLM gives you a lot of the benefit. First thing first, fine-tuning is just a process where you train an LLM with a set of examples of your prompt or the user query and the output. So in a way you are training an LLM to generate a predictive output as you need for your application. So your examples will actually help the LLM to know the, the style and the tone, the response structure, also help the LLM to handle the different error and edge cases. And this will help you generate more predictive output even using smaller la large language models. When we talk about the benefits of doing fine tuning, the benefits are really you can use much smaller models to perform much better. So the output response will be much faster. And because it's a small LLM, your running cost will be much lower. This will also help in reducing the prompt length. Now your fine tuned LLM knows how to respond. So you probably do not need to add any, you know, one shot or few shot examples. And as, and as a result, you will also save in the token cost. And the best thing is you can bake in any specific tone or formatting or style that you want for your AI application. Now there are few misconceptions that is out there when it comes to the concept of fine tuning. The one of the first misconception is that you are training your model with fact based knowledge. So now, as I said before, LLMs are not a trusted source of data or knowledge. So LLMs are just a predictive machine. So it might generate output based on your training data, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee that it will generate the best output. So you should always add, you know, external knowledge if your application is more of a knowledge powered AI application. One of the other misconception is that fine tuning is expensive. It is really not. And I'm definitely going to bring more video about how to do fine tuning. It's not really a complex process and anyone can do it. You do not need a data engineer or data scientist to do a fine tuning as because as I said, all you need is set up examples of your prompt and completion pair to fine tune a model. And another misconception is that once you have fine tuned your model with your data, you don't need rag anymore. You definitely need drag if you're building an AI application where you have large chunk of data to be fed as knowledge base and especially where your knowledge base is continuously upgrading or getting updated. For example, if you're making a legal and regulatory application, that, mean, that means your legal framework are being changed every time there is a new law coming in, the regulatory frameworks and regulatory compliance are being changed every now and then. So that means your AI application needs to have the latest information and fine tuning will not ensure that you will always get the latest information, right? Now let's take a look at the difference of the from structure, if you are using a fine-tuned LLM, which is more of purpose specific, or if you are using two generic large language models such as OpenAI's GPT or Google Bird or anything as such. So on our left, the prompt structure that you see was the one that we have used before. Um, and once you use a fine-tuned LLM, all you are doing is just giving some priming where you are just giving some information what the LLM needs to generate. And then you are simply adding the dynamic content, which is the user query 
and you are adding the contextual information so in the left hand side we have used approximately 200 tokens whereas in the right hand side is just 56 tokens so you can see the cost is much much less as well as because you have less input tokens and your fine-tuned llm is more power specific llm performance will be much much faster than using a more generic large language models such as open eyes gpt3 or gpt4 now i really hope that with this masterclass video you have got a good grasp of the fundamentals about prompt engineering retrieval augmented generation and fine tuning and also have given you some idea about about where to use which specific technique when you're generating your next ai SaaS application if you have any query confusion or questions please let me know in the comments and i generally check all the comments and try to respond to each one of them and also please make sure that you subscribe to the channel because i'm going to bring more masterclass about different important topics related to ai or other technologies so stay tuned for that take care and i'll see you in the next one bye